Hello, this is day two of the Bat Sweeper project. Today I aimed to add lots of levels to the game and to make what was already there much better. So after I've finished making this pizza, we'll get started. Sadly, after recording the advert for my almost heaven crisis game last week, I forgot to change the frame rate back to 5 frames per second. So I recorded a video clip and it was 6 gigabytes in size and it wouldn't even load. So I don't have the recording for my first level when I draw it all, the house and the bats and everything. But I do have the rest of the game, so it's not too bad. This has always been the hardest bit of game making for me. I find it really difficult to carry on making it once I've done all the complicated stuff like the programming. I just find making the levels really boring. But in this case I had a deadline, it was for a competition, so I didn't mind making it too much. This is the second level. There aren't any enemies yet, it's still a kind of tutorial, it just teaches you to jump a bit better, to avoid the spikes, and to use the moving platforms. So there's not much there. It, and it also builds up your relationship with your mum. Yeah. Here I say all the lines for you and your mum, although the mum lines were replaced later on with Richard Hale's voice. Here is what they did sound like before I replaced them. Oh, hello darling, how was your day been? Richard Hale's version was a lot more manly, she sounded like a man, and I thought it was funnier to listen to that way. I've also got a couple of extra sound samples. These weren't included in the final game because I ran out of time when making it and I found a much better ending, which didn't require the sounds. What the hell? How's your day been? Help me. Hoover man. Help me. Hoover man. Well, thank you, my darling. Let's go home. I would just say I'm gonna bake you a nice big pasty you ain't ever gonna forget. Here I'm just programming in all the uh, the scripted bits, where the bat flies off, he stops if, you, if you're too far behind, that sort of stuff. It's boring to program and I still think there's a bug. If you fall off the top of the tower, you'll be able to overtake the bat, come up to the top of the cliff and then it'll fly up. Don't know why that happens, but oh well. As K. Kevin C. pointed out in the first video of this, I hadn't programmed in the dying for this game, but I do right now, so it's okay. I made it a bit like a game called Rick Dangerous, which I used to play on the Atari as a child. When you die, you kind of fall off the screen. I have to play test it a bit, jumping on the spikes, making sure I can't jump into the spikes and then fly out the top again, which was a problem. I had to set it so he only creates one dead version of himself, otherwise there was this shower effect which you could see back there. And here I just playtest it a bit more and make the dead body look dead. This is the bit when Josiah CT recommended that I made it shoot out projectiles. It was a brilliant idea and I just programmed it in here. I know I've already mentioned how it adds to the game and everything, but it was the one time when playtesters actually really added to the game. And when you look at the game now, it's obvious that both mouse buttons pressed together at the same time should have done something. But when I was making it, I didn't think of it. But linking the rubbish with the projectiles with the middle mouse buttons, it just made sense. Josiah CT came up with the idea of the hoover, the bats, the projectiles, and he also said that the king bat should have a, a crown on so that you know who stole your mum. Which is another obvious thing that I missed. In order to try and rack up more brownie points with the judges, I changed all the textures for the desert level, just to add a bit more variation to it. I quite like the colour scheme here. I would have included different areas like snow and jungle, but I didn't have time. Here's the excuse I came up with in the game. This is all narrated by Tom, by the way. From what I remember, this story's really boring until near the end, so I'll just skip this bit. And this bit. And this bit too. There. This bit's boring to watch because it's just making the levels, recolouring it to make it look like a desert scene. It's boring to watch and to make, but it's fun to play. So while this is going on, I'll talk about the song for a while. When I make a song, sometimes I get this little tune that is just perfect in my mind. I can listen to it hundreds of times, I won't get bored of it. 
And with this song, I made a version which was like that, but I've never found a way of putting it into a song properly. It just sounds out of place. Well, here's the normal version of the song. And here's the remake. So yeah, if anyone wants to make a song with this tune in, please do. I'd like to see somewhere where it actually fits in. Probably some kind of action song for a game. That black and white sign was just me editing the alpha of the sign. That's where I make the outside pixels slightly see-through. This kind of gives it an anti-aliasing effect. To make the most of the double mouse button tapping thing, I made these buttons that you had to press to blow up the dynamite. I didn't actually tell anyone how to do it, I just hoped that people would find out how for themselves. 24 hours before the deadline, I was just making as many levels as I could. I don't know if you enjoy watching me make all of these levels for the game, but well here's another song that I made. This one is in all the big boss fights in the game, where you're in a house then all of a sudden all these bats fly through the windows everywhere. It was based off an old song that I made earlier this year, but I never finished it. I didn't know what else to do with the song, so at this point you can hear that I just do the song again, but a slightly different note and different note order, and it works well. I then just added more and more bass and made it sound more noisy as it went on, and it seemed to work quite well with the game. I didn't really want to add water to this game because it's a lot of effort, but I just added some water that you're not able to go in, but it has some nice ripples, so it adds to the graphics a bit. So I stole it from a previous game that I made called Sundown Shambles, which I made last year for the same competition. It took a while to get right, but all it is, it's got loads and loads of very thin lines that go up and down, and when you enter the water it fires out invisible objects either way, and when they hit these little lines they start bobbing up and down, and that's how I make the ripples. I don't mind reusing things that I've made in previous games, as long as the previous games haven't been downloaded that much, and Sundown Shambles was pretty much ignored, so I I don't mind stealing stuff from that. No one seems to have noticed. These bat models have also been in two previous games, Sundown Shambles and Bat Spam, both of which were ignored. This is the third desert level, or the fifth level altogether. It's a lot more difficult than the previous ones, it's quite long as well, and it's interesting, no matter how rubbish a level is when you start off making it, by the time you finished it has its own atmosphere and feel, even though it's just using the same things as all the previous levels, it just has a different feel to it. And that's the magic thing about games and levels. I like mapping with Counter-Strike because every level feels different even though they're the same textures, especially in my case, but yeah, it just feels nice. And that concludes day two of the project. And that just about sums up my life. I eat peas, make games, bash my head on cupboards, and go to huge university house parties that you're not invited to. And then spent two and a half hours walking back in the rain because I missed the last bus.